I'm just gonna spend my St. Patrick's Day nice and easy, drinking responsibly, and we'll find the point of buying figures early one day. Oh god, what happened? Oh great, I'm Lego now. Let's talk about the island. The island is the 14th season of Ninjago, or no, it's the 4th season of Ninjago, oh wait, no, it's technically season 3 since Primer Prima. Okay, Ninjago the Island is the latest installment of Ninjago. It's based off the 4 sets released on March 1st, 2021, and consists of 4 11 minute episodes. So far, the island seems to have an okay reception, most people say 5 out of 10 or 6 out of 10, and oh my gosh, I'm, I'm sorry for going off on a tangent, but... I hate rating things out of 10, it's so stupid. Take The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for example, I'd easily give it a 10 out of 10 because of how good it is, but it isn't perfect. There are a few flaws, but the good easily outweighs the bad. A 10 out of 10 implies that it's perfect, but while Breath of the Wild is so good, there are some flaws not making it perfect. Meanwhile, if you call Breath of the Wild a masterpiece, it says that it's really really good, but doesn't say that there are no flaws. So instead of giving things a score out of 10, or rating things with stars, I like to use words like good or really good. Also yes, I know, I rate things on letterbox with stars, I hate myself too, but I've been trying to email them forever, but they won't respond. I've tried, okay? So I'd say the island is good. I'm gonna go through each episode summarizing the events briefly and talking about what I like and don't like. The thing I like right off the bat is the guy from the Explorers Club. He goes all the way to the monastery to tell the ninja that Misaka's membership has been cancelled and that seems to be all he cares about, which I also love. He doesn't care about the members, he cares about the money. Twitchy Tim's introduction is fun but gets old after a while. First off, I like the joke where he forgets everything when he twitches. It was funny the first time, but like any joke, the more it's used, the unfunnier it gets. Also, I know it's a kid show, but how can the ninja trust this guy? Sure, he's the only one who knows what's on the island, but he forgets who they are in 20 seconds. The ninja approaching the island is very cool. Feel free to call me a stinking idiot, but I don't think we've ever seen a Ninjago scene like this. It's fun and new, and I love it. Now here's a gripe. Look at the ninja catamaran. It's obviously Kai's, it's red with Kai's symbol. And the jungle choppers? Green with Lloyd's symbol. These vehicles are obviously made for Kai and Lloyd, Yet there are multiple of each, used by all the ninja? Kinda defeats the purpose of unique vehicles in my opinion. As a vehicle that's designed for Lloyd, why have all the ninja use it? If they had unique vehicles for each of the ninja but didn't make sets about them, that wouldn't be the first time that we don't get a vehicle in the show as a set. Anyways, the ninja find the camp on the beach and sees the word help spelled out with rocks, which I just find really cool for some reason. Anyways, the ninja head out further into the island looking for them, and I gotta say, what a banging way to end the episode. A lot of great stuff in this episode, and a lot of stuff stuck with me. And episode 2 only got better. Episode 2 introduced Zippy, a fun little dragon who loves chasing coconuts, and just had a lot of fun moments. My favorite being when Jay crossed the bridge, it makes a lot of sense for out of all the ninja, Jay to know the cliches. I think it was a bit much when he was actually crossing the bridge, but when the bridge actually fell, I genuinely laughed. That's something I haven't done since season 11. The island definitely had its shares of ha-has. All the ninja except Lloyd and Timmy get captured, and episode 2 ended with the introduction of Mamatis and the islanders, and they were actually pretty interesting. They were tasked to protect the storm amulet from Ojira from the first Minjutsu Master. Episode 3 was very good. I will say Jay is pretty stupid in this episode, he's referred to as the gift of Jay, basically saying that Jay is the gift, but why is he a gift? It's quite simple, Wajira keeps on showing up so the islanders would send out treasures of some sort to satisfy her and protect the amulet, but no matter what she keeps coming back, so they hope that if they sacrifice Jay she'll go away forever, but all that happens later in the episode. A majority of the episode is spent escaping from the cell that Mamatis put them in. In there, the ninja find Wu, Masako, and Clutch, who reveals that he's after the amulet. So while the ninja escape, Clutch and his assistant try to steal the amulet, which also stalls the ninja, and the islanders catch them again. So at the beach, the islanders sacrifice Jay, and we see Wojira, who shoots fire. She steals Jay and escapes into the night, but Lloyd notices something. Wojira's tooth. It's wood, which makes Lloyd suspicious. In a random cave on the island, some criminals have set up a camp, and what the islanders thought was Wojira, it was actually shit, they have been stealing treasures for money. 
The ninja find that cave, have a brief fight scene, and then the true villain is revealed. Think about it, who creates vehicles, works with bandits, has vehicles that shoot fire, and came in a set this year? The mechanic! Nope, it's Mother Heckin' Ronin. It's extremely unexpected, but fits his character really well, and I love it so much. It's, it is very Scooby-Doo-like, even ending with a I would have gotten away with it if I you Claire tries to steal the amulet one more time, Lloyd talks with Masako and Wu in one of the best lit scenes in all of Ninjago, and the story's over. I do agree that the island is rushed and the final battle is very underwhelming, and the special format was done a lot better in Day of the Departed. It feels like it's more of a setup to season 15 than its own separate story. I do agree that the islanders were not fleshed out enough, like this guy with two heads. I love him, he inspired me to have two heads, but I don't know his name. He's not gonna be as iconic as Daddy No Legs, which makes me very sad. But Ronin as the villain I love a lot. Shadow of Ronin is so nostalgic, and I have loved Ronin ever since he was introduced. He absolutely stole the game and was such a great addition to Possession, Skybound, Day of the Parted, and Hands of Time. Then Season 8 comes around and Ninjago just went, who's Ronin? And that's why I hate Seasons 8 and 9, but that's another story for another day. Overall, I like the island. It's not perfect, not as good as rebooted, but better than the final battle. I also reviewed the island on Letterboxd. I, I know I just spent the last few minutes reviewing the island, so there's no point of looking at it, but I just wanted to plug my letterbox. After WandaVision, which I will be doing a Nykus' stuff on sometime soon, my love for the MCU has returned, and I want to rewatch all the movies, so as I watch them, I will be posting reviews on Letterboxd if you want to see them. Alright, well that's it. Thanks for watching, have a good day, and I'm going to get back to searching for the point of buying figures early. If you have a lead, please let me know.